The Sony FS7 II is the next generation of the industry favorite, the Sony FS7, now known as the Classic. Our sources report that the FS7 was an overwhelmingly popular camera for both rental houses and owner operators. In this video, we'll cover what made the original FS7 so popular, what's new in the FS7 II, and whether or not I think it's worth upgrading to. Earlier this month, I attended a Sony FS7 II event that was co-sponsored by both Talamus and Hunts Photo Video. I met the product manager for Sony, Takuro, and I got to ask him some questions directly and I got to shoot some S-Log3 footage briefly for this review. So what made the Sony FS7 popular in the first place? I believe that the main attraction to this camera is the form factor. It's clearly designed to be an all-in-one package that is both ready for tripod and shoulder shooting. And really for shoulder shooting, that's the main thing that makes it different than most cameras out there. On top of that, it's also capable of recording 4K internally, has 14 stops of dynamic range, 422 10-bit recording, and both Ultra HD and DCI 4K internal recording up to 60 frames per second. Looking at the viewfinder, it's in the correct place for handheld viewing, and it's able to change positions with one hand, so no articulating arm needed. It also has an ND filter built in, so no map boxes are necessary in most cases. It also has a built-in hand grip for control, and together this creates the perfect form factor for handheld shoulder shooting. So what's new in the Sony FS7 II? Well, let's start by talking about some of the things that are exactly the same. Overall, the body design, exactly the same. The sensor, the codex, the internal recordings, the max frames per second, all of that is exactly the same. So if you're looking for a major upgrade in body or sensor, it's not gonna happen in the FS7 II. One of the biggest upgrades is the variable ND filter that was present in the Sony FS5 is now in the FS7 II. This allows you to essentially be able to do an ND filter pull like an iris pull. This means that you can keep your ISO, shutter, and aperture constant while adjusting the exposure smoothly only using the ND filter wheel. This is one of the best features and innovations I've seen in a camera ever, really. This changes the way that you shoot every day and in almost every situation. It's really an incredible feature to have and it's something that I would want if I had the option. You can still use the ND filters in a fixed standard increment as well if you're used to working in that way. In addition to adding the variable ND filter, the FS7 II also has a stronger ND filter in it. The original FS7 had a 1 64th ND, where the new FS7 II has a 1 1 28th ND, so twice as strong, and this is going to allow you to keep a wider aperture in extremely bright situations like day exteriors. The next major upgrade is the locking E-mount. The original Sony FS7 has a standard E-mount where the lens is removed by pressing a release button and then spinning the lens. This allows for a single operator to switch a lens very quickly and easily, but the mount isn't as stable or strong as it could be. The amount of weight that the old mount could handle was a little bit limited and could result in a slight image shifting if the lens was too big or not properly supported. The Sony FS7 II introduces the locking E-mount. This is similar to the Airy PL mount, which is much stronger and can support the weight of full-size 2 3rd inch B4 zooms or larger cinema zooms. We see similar EF locking mounts in the new Canon C300 Mark II and C700 and we'll probably see more of these locking mounts and most of the cinema cameras that support EF and E-mount lenses in the future. I think it's worth noting that this locking E-mount that can handle more weight isn't needed by all users, but know that even if you don't value this, there are many shooters who are using bigger lenses with the Sony FS7 that do require it, and this feature alone is worth the upgrade for them, or at least the upgrade for the rental houses that they're working with, because they're going to need this feature. Moving on to some of the smaller upgrades, the original Sony FS7 viewfinder mount was pretty good. It had a really nice design for being able to adjust the monitor with one hand, but overall, the rod design was a little bit cumbersome. Specifically, changing the Z-axis of the monitor, moving it back and forth, could and would normally result in changing the roll or orientation or horizon of the monitor at the same time. The new Sony FS7 II has redesigned the monitor arm so that each axis has its own rod and clamp system, it's much nicer. On top of that, the Sony FS7 hand grip arm has been redesigned to allow for toolless adjustments. In the original version, you had to use an Allen key or some sort of tool to change the length of the arm. That's no longer needed. We have a simple tie down, much nicer there. And also you can take the hand grip and mount it directly to the body 
skipping and bypassing the arm completely for people that like to hold it like an old Aton camera. Both of these upgrades are apparently also purchasable for the original Sony FS7 if you're looking to upgrade your viewfinder mount and hand grip without having to buy an entirely new camera. The last upgrade we're going to talk about is the stock lens for the Sony FS7 II. This lens is an 18 to 110 f4, and the major upgrade is that it's now both servo and manual, so the focus and zoom rings are a lot more responsive. Like the other version, it has a rubberized handle, it's sized correctly for someone to hold with their hand, has optical steady shot, and it also has an interesting feature where you can switch the zoom ring direction. This version has a built-in 0.8 pitch uh, focus gear built into it so you can attach a follow focus or a wireless follow focus seamlessly without having to use third-party lens rings. The lens hood now has a built-in lens cap just like the Sony Z1U back in the day for those of you that remember that. I actually had a lot of fun shooting with this lens and I would definitely use it for certain types of run and gun shooting. I would love to do more testing with it. You guys let me know in the comments below if you're interested in seeing this lens out in the real world on a project. So let's talk about the question that everyone on the internet is talking about. If you have the Sony FS7 Classic, do you have to upgrade to the FS7 II? The answer to that is no, and Sony doesn't necessarily expect you to upgrade either. You have the same image quality specs. The biggest difference is the locking email and variable ND with a higher max ND rating. If you don't need those features, then you don't need the Sony FS7 II as an upgrade. However, if you do need the locking email because you're using heavier lenses, again, this feature alone is probably worth the trade-in. Sony says that they aren't discontinuing the original Sony FS7 and that both the FS7 and FS7 II will coexist at the same time, so I wouldn't expect any price cuts on the FS7 Classic anytime soon. If you are looking to buy a new Sony FS7, I do believe that the FS7 II is worth the upgrade from the FS7 original and the extra price. That's just my opinion. The variable ND is a massive feature and the extra ND strength can make the difference in certain situations when you're shooting outside and you wanna be wide open. On top of that, the ergonomic upgrades of the viewfinder and the hand grip are gonna make life a little bit easier. And if you're a rental house, it's likely that you're gonna have to purchase at least a couple of these for the locking E-mount alone for the users that are using much bigger lenses with this camera system. I hope you've enjoyed this tech review of the Sony FS7 II. I've not personally shot much with the FS7 Classic and I didn't get much time to actually use the FS7 II in person either. But it's clear to me that this is a solid tool for solo shooters who don't want a ton of accessories but do need solid ergonomics, 4K internal recording, built-in ND filters, and professional XLR. If you learned something new and enjoyed any part of this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. In the comments below, let me know your thoughts and questions, and if you'd like me to shoot a project for the channel with this camera to see a little bit more of it in action. I will see you guys on the next episode. You get out there and plan better, shoot better.